Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk about capacitors, different types of capacitors. Now before we get started, there are literally thousands of different types of capacitors. I can't possibly cover them all. I don't even have a good selection of them here. I have an average selection and a selection of what, <clears throat> of what you'll see in your home electronics journey. So that's all we're talking about. So don't, you know, coming down the line saying, well, you didn't cover the Gingle Bob capacitor. Yeah, probably because I've never even heard of it. There's just too many. So capacitors can be um, broken down into different groups. Film capacitors, ceramic capacitors, electrolytic capacitors being three of the big ones. So let's start with that. Let's start with ceramic capacitors. Here is a basic ceramic capacitor. Zoom in there, will we'll it focus? Focus, there we go. Oh, we had it. There we go. So that is a 103, a one, oh, a, you, come on. Anyway, we're, the material, the dielectric material in this type of capacitor is a ceramic material. This is very common. These are very small value capacitors. You will see these quite a bit in electronics. And there are many types of them. That's a single layer ceramic capacitor. This is a multi-layer ceramic capacitor. Come on. Focus. There we go. It's a multi-layer ceramic capacitor, also called a monolithic ceramic capacitor. This is also a ceramic capacitor. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not familiar with this type, but I believe this is also a ceramic capacitor. I know it's a capacitor. I believe it's a ceramic material capacitor. So these are common types of ceramic capacitors used in electronic circuits. Ceramic capacitors generally have a lower capacitance value than, say, electrolytic capacitors. And you'll see them used a lot in filtering. Next up, film capacitors. Okay, I forgot to mention ceramic capacitors, non-polarized. As are film capacitors. So here is a film capacitor. Probably not going to want to focus. Come on. If we get up under the light here, it'll want to behave better. Do you want to behave better? You can behave yourself. Come on. Come on. You can do it, man. I know you can. All right. There is a film capacitor. Now, film capacitors have a different advantage over ceramic capacitors in that there is a direct uh, connection to the electrodes on both sides of the winding. And this contact is is what enables it to keep all of your paths very short. And this design behaves like a number of larger capacitors in parallel. So that's a good thing about film capacitors. So this is one type, this is a, a rather large one, even though it has a small capacitance. This is another type of film capacitor and another type, and another type. Again, these are non-polarized, and I would consider these like medium value capacitors. Now, another type of film capacitors that are very specialized are the class X and the class Y capacitors, and they are required, at least here in the United States, when a short to ground could prove dangerous to human life. This is a class X1, I think. No. This is a class X2 film capacitor. This is another class type. This is a picture. You might, be, you might see these more often. I'm out of black ink in my printer. Another type of uh, class X2 film capacitor. You see a lot of those. So like I said, they are required when a short to ground could prove dangerous to human life. 
usually non-polarized. So usually, because I'm positive, even though I don't know the specifics, that there is a polarized film capacitor out there. All right, now we're going to move on to electrolytics, which are another common type of capacitor that you're going to see in your home electronics. Here is a simple one. This one is 22 microfarad. You can see it's relatively small. That's 470 microfarad. And you can see the difference in the diameter, even the difference in length, because these electrolytic capacitors use a chemical, like a paste almost, in between the layers, which are wound in a spiral inside of here. So generally, in this case, the bigger the capacitor, the bigger the size, the larger the capacitance you're going to be dealing with. And these are polarized. Here is another one. This one is uh, 22 microfarad. Now here is a larger one. This is 2200 microfarad. So we have 22 microfarad, 2200 microfarad. Okay. Here is 10,000 microfarad as opposed to 22 microfarad. Look at the size difference in that. And then we've talked about supercapacitors before. This is 500 farad. And it is simply a type of an electrolytic capacitor. Now, one other thing you have you will see in different types of electrolytic capacitors are radial and axial electrodes, like this. So this type is called the radial, where your two electrodes or the two legs come out the bottom. And this is called an axial. And you can remember that because the electrodes pass through the center axis of the capacitor. And this one is 100 microfarad. You'll see a lot of these type of things used in audio amplifiers. Older types, you know, like a old Fender Princeton Reverb where they're strapped across the boards. So like I said, again, there are other types this is the main, the, some of the main types. Again, I don't have every type here. I don't have any paper capacitors, polystyrene. I don't have any bipolars. I don't have any polycarbonates. I don't have any mylar. And I don't have any tant tantalums. Tantalums are another type that you'll see, and they're actually uh, made from that material. They tend to fail a lot, but you see them a lot in uh, radio circuits. Now, one last type. And... I believe this is probably a ceramic capacitor. I am not quite sure. Go ahead. Let's see if I can look up the numbers. Hold on. No, I can't find anything on the numbers. But this is a high voltage capacitor. 630 volts. This is only 33 microfarad. But you can see how it has a very tough plastic case. And the inside is potted with some kind of epoxy. This is made to go down onto a PCB and keep you safe from what's in there. So if that capacitor fails in there, it's the, the exploding pieces are going to be caught within the, um, the epoxy and the plastic. And that is uh, an important thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with polarized electrolytic capacitors. If you hook them up backwards, they can and will explode. You want to see? Okay. Here's a 470 microfarad 10 volt capacitor, electrolytic. There's the negative. We're going to hook it up backwards and blow it up. Okay, here we go. The negative is on the positive. Now we'll put the positive on the negative. And this might just take a few seconds. <laughs> Kaboom! That's how we do it in the lab. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. 
Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Thank you for all your support, everyone. 2020, I'm hoping, is going to be a great year for us. Everyone who's supported through Patreon and through PayPal donations is fantastic. Um, everybody who's bought something from the Amazon store, that's what keeps this channel going. I couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, you are a part of the team. Hey, feel free to email me, arduino0169 at gmail.com. I try and get back to just about everybody.